Hi everyone, welcome to this new tutorial. It's going to be a quick one and it's a really easy setup. But first things first, of course, delete our beloved default cube and shift a mesh add a cylinder instead. So this is the cylinder we'll be actually instancing our windows on. So a few little things before we start with the geonodes. Uh, first rotate the cylinder on the y-axis. Uh, you can scale it up a little bit because we want to have a longer kind of tunnel. Um, and then go into edit mode, face select and select those two faces and delete them. Uh, because uh, we really want like a tunnel or a tube that we can see through. And then add a few edge loops with Control R. Um, it's really up to you how many you want. You can always subdivide later. Um, if you if you like, don't make it too heavy at the beginning, maybe for your computer, but it's really up to you. And now we have quite a neat little cylinder. I like to kind of shade smooth, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> It's just a reflex I have, but it doesn't really matter. You don't really have to do it because we won't be seeing it. So let's find our window. I have Blender Kit enabled, which is a really, really great feature for Blender. Um, then you just type in window and you have a whole selection of windows you can choose from. I like to go for this kind of medieval window by Benjamin Muir Mills. Thank you, Benjamin, for making your model available uh, through Blender Kit. So um, if you just uh, actually uh, click on the window, it'll just download into your scene straight away. And here we have it, and it downloaded as a collection. So we can close Blender Kit, set our rendering. I like to go with cycles, but then again, it's really up to your own personal preference. And um, to speed it up, I like to uh, put the noise threshold to 0.1 and I like the word settings to be pitch black because it gets it has that dramatic look to it all. So now we have our rendering settings enabled. One last thing before we jump into geometry nodes, just make sure you control A all transforms onto the cylinder because we really want to zero everything out so it doesn't mess up with uh, our geometry node settings later on when you actually realize that we have a really cool setup but uh, we haven't actually applied all transforms on the cylinder and then it starts to get messy so select the cylinder click new in the geometry nodes and let's get started so what we want is that the windows actually are distributed on points on the cylinder. So for that, look for the instance on points node and just drop it in. And for the instance one, we will be having a window. So for that, you can just go up there and drag and drop it into the geometry nodes window and plug geometry into instance. Now we have the collection info node that contains a window and it's connected and we can see now that it distributed the windows on points and it has that kind of a hell razorish uh, fractal look and we can see that it really distributed on points because we can see through between all the uh, edges it is quite cool but it's not totally what we want. I mean, we could stop here and render this and it really looks cool, but there are a few little things. We actually want them to rotate. So we need to act on the rotation and the scale um, sockets. So for rotation, uh, what we want is for the windows to be distributed along the normals of our cylinder. And so you look for the normal node and uh, you just plug it into rotation. And now uh, if you want to animate our cylinder, so you go to zero 
and then keyframe the rotation X on zero degrees and you go to the last frame and you type in 360 for 360 degrees and keyframe that. Now when you play it, well, our cylinder rotates for rotation. But actually our windows are not moving. So you can type in T with both keyframes selected and uh, set interpolation to linear. So you have a perfect loop. But here we can see that actually they're distributed along normals, but they're not actually moving around in the same way as the cylinder is moving. I'm not sure if I'm clear enough what I'm saying, but um, we actually need to control how that distribution along the normals. So you can just drop in the align Euler to vector nodes and that will actually help us select the axis we want to act on. And set the collection info node to relative and now you can see that it is working better than before because each window is animated on that axis. And the best is to plug the normal not into rotation but into vector and now we really do have pointing them outwards um, instead of actually being sideways. So now we have this cool kaleidoscopic effect uh, where we can see them actually scaling in and out and rotating. And if you move the window, the original window, you can actually affect the position of the instances because we haven't realized the instances yet, so all those instances are affected by the original object. So this is quite cool, but now what we want is to have them scaled up and down, make them bigger and smaller. So for that, um, we, um, we need to act on the scale. So we will just add a noise texture and then plug it into scale and then play um, with the parameters until you find something that works for you. So this is quite cool. But what you can actually do to have a bit more control is to set the minimum and the maximum range uh, with a map range node. So you, so you can search for the map range, drop it in between the noise and the instance and points node. And then you can, as it says, map the range <laughs> of how the noise texture affects the scale. So you can play with those parameters until you find something that works. Um, it becomes quite mesmerizing. I quite like just playing it and watching it, really. So we still have our window there. And um, its position is directly affecting the instances. So if you, for example, rotate it, as you can see here, the instances will rotate accordingly as well, which means that then you can add that kind of extra um, stuff to it really and um, extra sort of animation and movement. So I like it all zeroed out. 
first and then it's really up to you to see what works best for you and how do you want to do it um, so this is the basic principle of it all uh, it's a really simple way of um, doing it and then you can just uh, set up the lights uh, maybe increase the subdivisions because uh, maybe you don't have enough of them especially if you want the side view from and um, you can just add a light in the middle I chose a point light and then just played on the intensity and the power of it all uh, you can as well change the color and um, then you can set up the camera and everything and maybe put a light outside of the cylinder on the side so then when you uh, render the side view then you, you have that geometry the instances intersecting with the light giving that on off effect um, it's really really up to you so you really can set that with the camera and then uh, play the animation But we still have this window up there, and uh, if you move it upwards on the z-axis, you can actually open up the tunnel, um, make it more um, wide, or if you rotate it, you can rotate the windows. Um, it's really just play with that instance uh, object and set it up to your liking. It's um, you can have a, kind of a vortex side kind of window uh, spinning, uh, which is quite cool as well. Um, or you can rotate it uh, on a different axis and then have a completely different effect. It's really uh, it really depends on what you want to have. Here they are all now sideways. So yeah. But you still have to keep actually that uh, original instance. Uh, so the original collection and object um, enabled uh, in the render view. Uh, for the instances actually to come through the render. So that's the only downside to this method is that you have to keep that original window in the scene. So you either actually arrange all your mapping um, once you've positioned it high up there and then organize everything accordingly um, or you uh, actually uh, decide uh, to do something else by adding another extra node which is the realize instances node and um, the problem with that for me is that my computer actually can cope with so many instances and it just crashes because the realize instances node um, realizes the instances meaning it actually creates them makes them real um, so i kind of like just keeping my window out of my camera view um, and enabling thus uh, workflow that is uh, much quicker, much faster. Um, but this is basically my final setup, which is really simple. And if you really do want, you can add the realize instances at the end here. But as you can see, my computer is lagging and it's still lagging and yep it's going to crash 
So this is it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Um, hope you learned something new or experimented with different parameters and uh, let me know in comments if you have any questions and uh, I really thank you for watching and many thanks to all of you who already subscribed to my channel. Um, it's really, really appreciated. So I'll see you next time.